Once upon a time in a small village nestled in a lush valley, there lived a man known far and wide for his laziness. The villagers often whispered about him, wondering how he managed to survive while doing so little work. Unlike the other villagers, who toiled from dawn to dusk to earn their keep, this man sought ways to get by without lifting a finger. He spent his days wandering aimlessly, hoping to stumble upon a meal or a bit of fortune without exerting any effort. One crisp morning, as the sun began to rise and the world around him buzzed with life, the lazy man found himself wandering the outskirts of the village. His stomach growled with hunger, but rather than seek out honest work, he began to look for an easier way to fill his belly. As he walked through the countryside, his eyes fell upon an orchard of apple trees, their branches heavy with ripe, juicy fruit. The sight made his mouth water, and he decided then and there to help himself to a few apples. As he wandered through the forest, his mind raced with thoughts of how he could find food without getting caught again. The forest was dense and full of life, but the lazy man had no skills in hunting or gathering. All he knew was how to avoid work. As he trudged along, he noticed something peculiar out of the corner of his eye. There, in a small clearing, lay an old wolf. The man's first instinct was to hide, but as he looked closer, he saw that the wolf was not a threat. It was crippled, its body scarred from old injuries, and it could only move by dragging itself along the ground with its two remaining legs. The sight filled the man with both curiosity and pity. How could this wolf, so clearly weakened and unable to hunt, possibly survive in the wild? He crouched down behind a bush, watching the wolf from a safe distance. As he observed, something remarkable happened. A lion emerged from the underbrush, moving with the grace and power that befit the king of the jungle. The lazy man's heart skipped a beat, and he quickly climbed up a nearby tree to avoid being seen. He expected the worst, Surely the lion would devour the helpless wolf, but instead of attacking, the lion carried a large piece of meat in its mouth. The lazy man's eyes widened in astonishment as the lion approached the wolf and gently placed the meat before it. The lion then turned and disappeared back into the forest, leaving the wolf to feast. The lazy man could hardly believe what he had just witnessed. It was as if the lion had taken pity on the crippled wolf and decided to provide for it. As the wolf ate, the lazy man sat high up in the tree, deep in thought. This must be a sign, he whispered to himself. Surely, if God can provide for a helpless wolf, he will provide for me as well. The more he thought about it, the more convinced he became that he need not worry about working or finding food. God had a plan, and just as he had sent the lion to care for the wolf, he would send someone or something to care for him. Filled with this newfound belief, the lazy man descended from the tree and set off to find a place where he could wait for God's provision. He found a comfortable spot beneath a large tree where the grass was soft and the shade was cool. I will sit here, he decided, and wait for God to send me what I need. And so he sat and waited. The hours passed slowly and the lazy man grew hungry, but he remained patient, convinced that food would soon come his way. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky with hues of orange and purple, the lazy man's stomach rumbled loudly. Still, he did not move. He waited through the night, his hunger growing with each passing hour. The next morning came, and with it, the first rays of sunlight filtered through the leaves above. The lazy man's hunger had now turned to pain, yet he remained determined to wait for God's mercy. Another day passed, and then another, but no food appeared. The lazy man grew weak and dizzy, his body crying out for sustenance. Still, he did not leave his spot. He waited and waited and waited, until finally, after two long days of fasting, he could bear the hunger no longer. The lazy man, weak and disheveled, approached the sage and poured out his story. O oh, wise one, he began, his voice hoarse from thirst, I saw a miracle in the forest. A lion brought meat to a crippled wolf, and I believed it was a sign from God. I thought God would show the same mercy to me, so I waited for days, but no help came. Why did God show mercy to the wolf but not to me? 
The sage listened patiently, his eyes filled with understanding. When the man had finished his tale, the sage spoke, his voice gentle but firm. My son, it is true that God has a plan for everyone, and you are indeed a part of his plan. But you have misunderstood the sign that was given to you? The lazy man frowned, confused. What do you mean, wise one? I saw the lion bring food to the wolf. Was that not a sign of God's mercy? The sage nodded. Yes, it was a sign, but you have taken it the wrong way. God did not show you that scene to tell you to be like the wolf, waiting helplessly for others to provide for you. Instead, he wanted you to see the greatness of the lion, who, in his strength and power, showed compassion to the weak. God's message to you was not to sit idly by, expecting others to take care of you, but to rise up and be like the lion, to be strong, resourceful, and generous. The lazy man's eyes widened as the sage's words sank in. He had indeed misunderstood the sign. He had focused on the wolf's helplessness when he should have been inspired by the lion's strength and kindness. The sage placed a comforting hand on the man's shoulder. Do not despair, my son, he said kindly. This is a lesson you needed to learn, and now that you understand it, you can choose a different path. Reflect on your life, think about the signs you may have misread, and contemplate the path that will lead to true fulfillment and happiness. Remember, God's mercy is abundant, but it is often found in the strength and courage He gives us to take action, rather than in waiting for others to provide for us. The lazy man, now humbled and enlightened, thanked the sage for his wisdom. He realized that his life could no longer be about avoiding work and waiting for handouts. Instead, he needed to embrace the qualities of the lion, strength, courage, and generosity, and use them to create a meaningful life for himself and others. With renewed determination, the man left the sage and returned to the village. He sought out honest work, knowing that through his own efforts, he could provide for himself and contribute to the well-being of others. As time passed, the villagers noticed a change in him. He was no longer the lazy man they once knew, but someone who worked hard, helped his neighbors, and lived with a sense of purpose. The man's transformation became a source of inspiration for others in the village. They marveled at how he had changed, and they too began to see the importance of not just surviving, but thriving through their own efforts and the support of their community. And so, the man who had once been known for his laziness became known for his strength and generosity. He had learned that true success in life is not about what is given to you, but about what you give to others and how you use your gifts to make the world a better place. The lesson of the lion and the wolf stayed with him always, guiding him through the challenges of life with courage and compassion. In the end, the man found not only the food and comfort he once sought, but also the deeper satisfaction of a life well lived, a life that reflected the wisdom of the sage and the strength of the lion.